In today's video we take a look at the man who would be known as the acid bath murderer, that of John George Hay. John Hay was a dangerous man to know, especially if you were a friend of his and rich. Chances are you ended up with a bullet in the back of your head and your body dumped into a vat of sulfuric acid. His theory was if there was no body there was no crime and he got away with it five times. His crimes fueled a life of luxury, living in an expensive London hotel, driving fast cars and having his suits made in Savile Row. To friends and future victims, he was a man of culture and taste, and would treat you to afternoon tea or an evening drink in his hotel, or a concert at the Royal Albert Hall. When he got to know your personal details and finances, properties that you owned and where to find your savings, you could become his next victim. John Hay was born on the 24th of July 1909, Stamford, Lincolnshire, and raised in the village of Outwood, West Riding, Yorkshire. He had a strict upbringing by his parents, who were members of the Plymouth Brethren, a conservative Protestant sect. They built a seven foot fence around the house and wouldn't allow him to bring any school friends home in case he was contaminated by the outside world. Hay claimed to have recurring religious nightmares in his childhood. He learned to play the piano and was fond of classical music and would often attend concerts. After school he was apprenticed to a firm of motor engineers. He left after one year to go into insurance and advertising. Age 21, he was dismissed after being suspected of stealing from a cash box. After being fired, he moved on to forging car documents. On 6th of July 1934, Hay married 23-year-old Beatrice Hammer. This didn't last long and he was jailed for fraud the same year. Beatrice gave birth to a baby girl whilst he was in jail. She gave the child up for adoption and left Hay. His family disowned him from then onwards. Hay moved to London in 1936 and became a chauffeur to William McSwan, a wealthy amusement arcade owner. Hay also maintained the amusement machines. Later he pretended to be a solicitor named William Cato Adamson, with offices in Chancery Lane London, Guildford Surrey and Hastings in Sussex. He sold fraudulent stock shares, purportedly from the estates of his deceased clients at below market rates. He was soon found out as someone had noticed that he had misspelled Guildford as Gilford on his letterhead. Hay received a four year prison sentence for fraud. He was released just after the start of the Second World War. He continued as a fraudster and was sentenced and served more time in prison. Regretting that he had left his victims alive to accuse him, he became intrigued by the French murderer Georges Alexandre Saray, who disposed of bodies using sulfuric acid. Hay experimented with field mice and found that it took only 30 minutes for their bodies to dissolve. In 1943, Hay was freed from prison and became an accountant at an engineering firm. Soon after, by chance, Hay bumped into a former employer, William McSwan, in a Kensington pub. McSwan soon introduced Hay to his parents. McSwan worked for his parents collecting rents on their London properties and Hay was very envious of his lifestyle. On the 6th of September 1944, McSwan disappeared. Hay had lured him into a basement on Gloucestershire Road, hit him over the head with a lead pipe, then put his body into a 40 gallon drum filled with concentrated sulfuric acid. Two days later, McSwan's body had dissolved. Hay then emptied the drums and contents into a manhole. Hay told McSwan's parents that their son had gone into hiding to Scotland to avoid being called up for military service. Hay began to live in McSwan's house and collecting rent from McSwan's parents. McSwan's parents became suspicious as the war was coming to an end and their son had not returned. On the 2nd of July 1945, Hay lured McSwan's parents to Gloucestershire Road by telling them that their son was back from Scotland for a surprise visit. There, he killed them with blows to the head and disposed of them. 
Hay stole McSwan's pension checks and sold their properties for around 8000 and moved to Onso Court Hotel, Kensington. By 1947, Hay was a gambler and was running short of money. He found another couple to rob, Archibald Henderson and his wife Rose. Hay pretended to be interested in a house that they were selling. He was invited to play piano by Rose at their housewarming party. While at the flat though, Hayes stole Archibald's revolver, planning to use it for his next crime. He rented a small workshop at No. 2 Leopold Road, Crawley, West Sussex and moved the acid and drums from Gloucestershire Road. Hay drove Archibald to his workshop on the pretext of showing him his new invention. On arrival, Hay shot Archibald in the head with the stolen revolver. He then lured Rose into the workshop saying her husband had fallen ill and shot her as well. After disposing of the bodies and the drums of acid, he then forged a letter with their signatures and sold all their possessions for £8,000, but kept the car and dog. Hay's last victim was an Olive Duran Deacon aged 69, the wealthy widow of John Duran Deacon. They lived on Onslow Court Hotel Kensington nearby Hay, but then Hay was known as an engineer and by chance Olive mentioned to him that she had an idea for artificial fingernails. He took her to his workshop in Leopold Road and on the 18th of February 1949 he shot her in the back of the neck from the same revolver he had used on Archibald. He stripped her of her valuables, including a Persian land coat, and then put her body in the acid bath. Two days later, her friend Constance reported her missing. Police soon discovered Hay's record of fraud and theft and searched his workshop. Inside, they found Hay's attaché case containing a dry cleaning receipt for Olive Duran Deacon's fur coat and papers referring to the Hendersons and McSwans. Unlike the workshop in Gloucestershire Road, the workshop in Sussex had no drains, so he poured the remains of the containers onto a rubble pile at the back of the property. On investigation, 28 pounds of human body fat, part of the human foot, human gallstones and part of a denture which belonged to Olive Duran Deacon were found. Hay later confessed to the killings of Olive Duran Deacon, the McSwans and Hendersons as well as three others, a young man called Max and a girl from Eastbourne and a woman from Hammersmith. Hay pleaded insanity at Lewis's eyes saying that he had drank the blood of his victims. Hay believed that if his victims' bodies could not be found, a murder connection would not be possible. Within minutes, the jury found Hay guilty and he was sentenced to death. On the 10th of August 1949, Hay drank brandy before being hanged by executioner Albert Pierpoint. And so ends the dark tale of John George Hay, or as history will remember him as, the acid bath murderer.